Welcome back guys. Today we're going to build a better bower. That is, we're taking one of the cheapest long throw polishers on the market, somewhere between $80 and $100 depending on if it's on sale or not, and we're going to use our scientific meters and tools to figure out what is needed to be done to make this polisher its best. I did another video on this polisher about a year ago when I swapped out the grease for a higher quality one, used a Rupes backing plate, and it had great results. The vibration was less, the t it was running cooler. I've been using that here in our shop for about a year and it's still chugging along, albeit sounding like it's about towards the end of its life. I'll be doing a video on that later. Today we're going to get some baseline measurements for vibration, noise, temperature that this polisher experiences right out of the box and then we're gonna start tinkering with it to see what can be done at a relatively low cost. So here we're gonna open it up brand new in the package, purchased on May 16th, 2021. There's the new and the old, you can see the difference. Same model number, I don't see any major changes compared to the old one. We're gonna use a Rupes DA Fine Polishing Pad, which is a finishing pad for the entire duration of this test. So we have the same same type of pad for before and after. We're gonna use the Rupes DA Fine Compound as well, or polish. So we're gonna get a baseline for vibration first. So I have two different vibration meters and they measure in meters per second squared. And I'll leave a link to the information on that. If you've watched my, my uh, cordless polisher video, you will see that this gets used extensively. So I tried I tried this in a couple different places just to see, and it this is it has quite a bit of vibration. Um, I'm trying to put moderate pressure as I do this to tr try to represent what it would be when you polish. The top number is what you're looking at there: 8.5, 11, 12.4, 13.7, and I just. In order to have a more consistent reading, I just put it right where the holder would be. So we're getting 12.3, 14.7, 14.5. So that's kind of where it's settled down. So 14.5 to 14.7. So now we're gonna do another one. This meter is a hand arm vibration meter specifically for this type of vibration. We're gonna put it on, you run it for five minutes and it will tell you the average meters per second squared vibration. And it's measured in a European system with points. And again, I will get to that here in a little bit. Polishing now for five minutes, we're gonna see where it stands and hopefully it's somewhere around the same, same area that our other meter had. We're just doing this just to double check, verify. And the reason that you pay attention to these points is that in a professional environment, it talks about an exposure level. There's an, an elevated level and then a level you cannot exceed before it starts really doing damage. You know, you can do nerve damage to your hands, things like that with the amount of vibration that you're exposed to. Again, we'll get into that later in this video. And we ended up with, hey, 14.7 meters per second, 37 points. Measuring the temperatures immediately after polishing, it looks like around 110 to 120 degrees, depending on where you put it at the motor and part of the head. So the grease for all the gears and everything is right here. So that's 47 to 49 degrees Celsius. So you can see where the hot points are. Obviously by the exhaust is where there's gonna be a lot of heat, but the head, you can see where the heat sort of sits there. Definitely right around the exhaust port. The brushes, very hot, 140 degrees or 60 degrees Celsius, that will burn you. So you have to be careful there. There's no no improving that unless we can change out some brushes and maybe improve. You can see below the head there where the pad sits, stays cool. So now we'll jump into noise. Speed one, it's like about 77.4 is what we're gonna call it at 24 inches or 61 centimeters away. 
should be the equivalent from your arm to your ear. Speed three. Looks like it's gonna settle down around 82.5. So that's what we're gonna mark for the base for speed three and speed six. If you're running it hard, it's gonna be 91.5 decibels, which is very loud. That would require hearing protection. So where are we at with a baseline rating? Here's our summary. This machine vibrates quite a bit. For comparison, a Rupes 21 Bigfoot is in the area of two to three meters per second squared. So much smoother, much cooler running, but that's the comparison. Quite loud at speed six, which you're gonna operate it quite frequently. So what we're going to do now, we're going to use the same backing plate, but we're just only going to swap the grease out with Lucas white lithium grease. And we're going to see how well, if it really makes any difference in noise, in vibration, in temperature, and then we'll start swapping out backing plates and see if we can find something else that may work better. So a few things of note, taking this polisher apart, the Counterbalance is a one-piece cast assembly, but it does have what appears to be adjustable weights in the back of it, and I'll get to that here in just a minute. It has four Phillips head screws. That's all you have to do is remove those four and remove the front cover using those two large screws on the side, and then you'll simply pull it off. Sometimes, in this case, you have to pry it off with something, probably not a screwdriver like I used, but something like that to pry it up, remove it, and then you'll see all the exposed, very thin Chinese grease that's in, inside this. And the other one that I had that I'm doing the long-term follow-up on, it actually, the grease wasn't even touching the, the gears, which is pretty amazing. But you can see there, this is, it's kind of the case here. You look at that, look at that gear that runs off of the motor. There's no grease on it. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove it all. Gonna use some Q-tips. There's several ways you can do this. You can go about using a heat gun to melt it down, melt it off, or use a rag and then this. I would highly advise against using some kind of chemical solvent just because you don't want to damage anything else inside it, bearings, etc. So this was the safer way. Took a little longer to do, but got the majority of it out. Don't have to get every last little piece out. Just want to get the bulk of it out. You can see it looks looks like earwax, but it is very, like not very viscous compared to the grease that we're putting in. Very thin grease. And I'm sure as it heats up, it may get a little bit better coverage. But this is, again, we've only run it just a small amount. And it just, it's the gears aren't, the grease isn't even touching the gears. Here's what we ended up with. As I said, didn't get quite all of it, but got the majority of it. So now we're gonna go ahead and use our Lucas white lithium grease. You can find a place where you can get that, usually on Amazon or your local big bot, well, your local auto parts store. We're gonna fill it up, not completely full, kind of to that line that you see where the machined head sits in. That's about where you wanna put it. And then use a Q-tip or a screwdriver or something to kind of force the rest of the grease underneath that gear that you see. Then put the head back on, spin it a little bit, just to make sure everything's worked out. You don't want to have it completely full. It's going to push it out when you put the head back on it. So just saving you the future mess. And there's our final product covering the bearing, covering the gear. There's grease underneath it and it's not packed full. Put a little bit on the gear, but that's not gonna matter as soon as we put it on. And you can see here, I was kind of struggling getting it to go back on and it only goes on one way. There's a front and a back, a left and a right. Took me a little bit to figure that out. 
Finally got it situated, screw the four screws back on, put the backing plate and the cover back on, and we're in business. And as I touched on before, you see the counterbalance. It's one piece of cast steel, cast aluminum, probably cast aluminum, but it does have what appears to be an adjustable, you can add or remove weight to help balance. And that may be something we play with later, but just for right now, we're looking at grease and backing plates more in depth than last time. So we're gonna put it all back together we're gonna run it in for about five minutes just so we get the grease nice and warm, make sure everything's circulated, and then we're gonna go about testing sound, vibration, and other backing plates. So here we go. So we've got the grease that's been cycled in. So now we're gonna check it on speed one. Previously it was 77.4, and now it's showing 67.6. Also note, the eagle-eyed viewers here, I am doing it what appears to be just slightly further away than when I originally tested it. So take this with a grain of salt, but it says a 9.8 decibel reduction. So more probably more like five or six. So here's speed three. It was 82.5, now it's 73.6, so that's a reduction of 8.9 decibels. Very significant, but again, probably not expecting eight or nine, more like five or six decibels when you see that there's a, a slight difference. So on to speed six, it was 91.5. We are down to 83.7, so you're below the threshold of 85 decibels for requiring hearing protection at two feet or 61 inches, 61 centimeters. That is a 7.8 decibel reduction. So again, more like five or six, but the point is we have decreased the noise just from the gears and changing the grease. Next, we're gonna check the vibration, see if anything has changed. Really nothing else has been altered, so I don't expect a huge change here. Let's see. So before it was 14.7 and it's still reading about, about the same maybe slightly less i don't know 14.8 yeah that, that's kind of settling down to 14.8 15 ish so really no major difference in vibration as you wouldn't expect that now we're going to run it for five minutes and check the temperatures so as i said earlier i did run out of six inch 150 millimeter yellow rupees finishing pads, so I swapped to a white pad. That's the only difference, still using the same compound. So if anything, maybe there's a slight reduction in temperatures, but as you can see, they were basically the same. The backing plate was just slightly warmer. Maybe I was just pressing a little harder. Not sure, but the surprise to me was the grease really didn't help the temperatures. It may help things last longer, higher quality grease as far as like the bearings and whatnot, but really no change. So we're gonna move on to the Rupes 150 millimeter six inch backing plate. It is made of, it has a, like an aluminum base, cast aluminum. So it is a little bit heavier. And one thing I didn't do, which I really should have done is weigh all of these to show you the difference. But this one is significantly heavier. And as a result, the polisher didn't like it. Look at the number there, 32.8 is what it's settled down to. That is significant vibration and I could feel it in my hands and it, like, it would bother you very quickly. So heavier backing plate, not the answer for this polisher. Therefore, it's probably gonna be a lighter backing plate. It's gonna get a better result. So with that out of the way, we're gonna move to the Rupes five inch, 125 millimeter backing plate and see if we get any changes. This is in my previous video, this is the backing plate that we ran with that grease, that we had a significant improvement, but I didn't have all the tools and meters in order to measure like we do now. So 
it settles down to about 11.3, 11.4 is what we're gonna call it. So that is a significant difference, about three or four meters per second squared of vibration reduction. So then we swapped over to the XL Evolution, that's the plastic one, and I didn't have a video of me showing installing it, but it settled down to about 9.2. So even a further reduction, however, even though the Rupes backing plate is 35, 40, 45 dollars, this XL one is 75 dollars. So that's nearly what you can get the polisher for. So if you if you can get this polisher for 80 dollars at Harbor Freight, and then you have to spend another 75, then you're stepping in the the realm of other brands of polishers. Then so the point is to keep the cost low here because this is an inexpensive polisher. So I still think a great option is the way we originally had it. Put the Lucas grease in it, put the Rupa's five inch backing plate, 125 millimeter backing plate, and go. But I did I did like it and did notice it. It is nice with the XL. So if you wanna spend the extra couple dollars, well, more than a couple dollars, the extra money on the XL backing plate, it looks like you're gonna have really good results with that too. So point being, if this polisher, it's a 20 millimeter throw, but it definitely performs better as far as vibration and noise with a five inch 125 millimeter instead of a six inch 150 millimeter backing plate. So I'm glad that we took the time to do this a little more in depth than the last video for building a better Bauer. So with that out of the way, thanks again for watching guys. Here are the final numbers. I'll show you right here on your screen. Thanks again for watching and we will see you soon.